Hi Stories channel here. Today we are covering a 2016 thriller film based on a true story called Girl in the Box. The movie begins at nighttime on a deserted path amidst the forest plains where a car gets parked on the side. A man emerges from the vehicle and proceeds to convince his scared wife Jan to come out as well. After forcing her to be a part of the venture, the man takes a dead body out of the trunk and drags it among the trees. As he prepares to dig with the shovel, he orders Jan to keep a lookout while he digs through the ground. After finishing the job, they get back in the car and leave. The scene then shifts to May 17, 1977 in Northern California where a girl hitchhikes for a ride. After two or three car pass, the same couple stops in front of her and agrees to give her a ride to Westwood. The girl gives her name Colleen and states that she is going to surprise her friend for her 21st birthday upon which a guy named Cam smiles. After that, they stop at a gas station where Colleen proceeds to use the restroom while Cam takes out a wooden box and puts it on the back seat. Afterwards, they continue the journey and the couple states that they're deciding to look up some ice caves that are ahead, so they drive off the road and the car is stopped. Jan becomes eerily silent and slowly gets out of the vehicle. Colleen follows her outside, but Cam captures her from behind and puts a knife on her throat. Now as she's a captive, Cam puts a blindfold on her eyes and gags her before throwing her into the box and closing her head on it. After that, the couple sits back in the car and waits until it becomes dark. As soon as the night falls in, they drive off again and reach their home. Following the arrival, Cam guides Colleen down into the basement. Inside, he ties her up, strips her, and begins to torture her. Jan watches all of this in silence and follows Cam's orders as he asks her to bring a box. The wooden box is then brought to him and Cam forces Colleen's face back into it while tying her up at the table. Still traumatized by the incident, Colleen keeps asking why this is happening to her. The next morning, Jan sits gloomily at the table due to overwhelming guilt, but Cam states it's just a few more days and they'll send her away. After giving a statement, Cam leaves the house, but Colleen's screams interrupt Jan's prayers, so she goes down to the basement while taking a rifle with her. As she nears the captive girl, Jan demands the reasons for the screams and Colleen pleads for mercy, but Jan pays her no mind. As the night begins, Cam returns home with a portable potty and goes down to the basement while Jan is listening to music. Down there, Cam opens up the wooden box and takes off the restraint from Colleen's mouth. Squealing in terror, she demands the reason for all this torture, but Cam doesn't answer her and forces her to eat. As she bites on the bread, he states that he's doing this because he can. After that, he starts to torture her again and Colleen's screams can be heard through the house so much so that Jan can hear them above all the music. That night, as Jan gets into bed with Cam, she shares her concerns about what they're doing. Cam states that she knew what was going to happen before they agreed to marry, therefore she has to follow with his acts. Jan agrees to it but makes a demand that he never gets too close to Colleen, which Cam accepts. The following day, the cruel psychopath builds a coffin box out of wood and seals Colleen inside it while attaching an air pump to it. The grave situation of the box becomes overwhelming for Colleen as she gets rapid flashbacks of the past, where her father offers her fare for the bus but she refuses. Her father doesn't question her anymore and now she's ended up here through all this mess. With those flashbacks repeating in her mind, she springs back into reality and finds herself confined in the box. On the other hand, Colleen's family gets a call from her friend stating she's nowhere to be found. Suspicion arises among them, so they file a missing persons report, but now she's 20, Colleen is considered independent, and she can be on her own. In the meantime, we witness that Jan is pregnant with a kid, but Cam isn't so happy about it, as they are holding Colleen prisoner as well. Therefore, they return home, but it's revealed that Jan has an injured leg, and she's walking with the help of crutches. Their neighbor talks to them and inquires about it, which Cam lies and says that Jan has arthritis. The neighbor wishes her health, and they enter the house. Inside, Cam finds a slavery magazine along with a contract. He takes the magazine to the basement and asks Colleen to read it out loud. As she states everything written on there, Cam feeds her a fake story about a slavery company that captures the escaped slaves and inflicts unimaginable torture on them. Furthermore, he states that he's a member as well and if she doesn't sign the slavery contact, he will send Colleen to the company and they'll do worse things to her. Drowning her under the immense pressure and fear, Colleen signs the contract amidst the tears. The following day, Cam gives her the name Kay along with all the directions and demands himself to be called Master. He asks her to call Jan Ma'am and follow each and every order. Among all the others, Cam gives one order that's above all and that's when he says attention, Colleen has to stand with her gown stripped and her hands up. She follows the order, but just then Jan arrives and asks her to get dressed immediately. The days pass by and they keep her as a slave and treat her like some sort of disease. In September 1978, Jan gives birth to her kid while Colleen stays traumatized in the box underneath the bed. After the delivery, she's let out to hold their newborn baby named Amber. 
after the admiration she sent back into the box and time moves on. It's now March 1979. Colleen is working and setting up dinner while Jan takes Amber to the room in order to make her sleep. As she returns and sits on the dining table, Jan complains that there's no fork on the table for her. Upon the carelessness, Cam takes the anger out on the innocent girl and Colleen gets tortured. But it turns out that the fork just fell down from Jan's table, so she runs to her room and starts reciting on the beaded cross while Colleen screams echoes in the house. Later, as the couple prepares for bed, Jan shares her concerns and insecurities again by stating the dangers if Kay were to escape. Upon hearing that, Cam comforts her and assures her that Kay won't run anywhere. And to make matters worse, Cam feeds a story to Kay about a similar slave who tried to escape but got captured and cut into pieces, ultimately to be tortured and die a gruesome death after one year. Afterwards, the scene shows us that Cam is taking Colleen outside for some work. They both drive out while Jan washes in suspicion and jealousy. Outside, they arrive in a forest where they decide to cut the trees and grab some wood. As Cam works with the axe, Colleen takes in the fresh air and puts forward a request to meet her family. Cam states that she'll do that soon once she's trustable, upon which Colleen claims that he can trust her. Just then, Cam accidentally smashes the axe on his ankle and drops to the ground while groaning in pain. As he whines for help, Colleen looks at this moment as a wide open chance to escape the hellhole, but something makes her stay and come back to help Cam. She looks after the wound, and when they return home, she tends to it as well. But just then, Jan enters and shoves her away so she can treat Cam herself. Later that night, she shares her jealousy with Colleen, so in order to resolve it, Cam states that both of them can share him. Therefore, they try it out, but just as Cam proceeds with the process, Jan runs away in grief and starts crying while abusing her husband. A fight breaks in between them as she states she's the only one working this marriage out. As Cam gives in, Jan puts forward the condition to put Colleen back in her box and he'll never touch her again. It's been 1,395 days after Colleen's abduction and Cam gives some leftover food to Jan so that she can give it to Kay. She goes to the room and opens the box to let her out. Colleen goes to the mirror to see herself in the most devastated state. She slowly crawls back to where she suddenly sees a young girl. Astonished to the core, Kay stares at Amber, who's significantly grown up and reflects on her own self upon how she's lost track of time. Afterwards, the family leaves for vacation while Kay is back in her box, drowning in her own thoughts and hallucinating into a place where she talks to a priest. The man states that the pain is inevitable and her coffin spreads into a room where she finds her mother praying for her. But suddenly, she returns back into her coffin where the whole area gets flooded and Kay drowns in an ocean. Amidst all of that, she finds herself liberated, and just as she wakes up, she breaks the box's lid by kicking it down. Meanwhile, the family returns and Cam notices the broken box. After a search around the house, he finds Colleen cooped up in the bathtub. Utterly relieved, he sends her back into the box and proceeds to talk with his wife, who seems really distant and jealous. Cam talks to her and states that he has to go easy on Colleen. Furthermore, he uses a Bible reference of a verse proving that a man is supposedly entitled to more than one wife, which Jan accepts. Afterwards, the change becomes visible as Colleen is invited to the dining table and Jan gives her food. Following that, the daily routine becomes normal and the days pass. It's March 1983, 2135 days since Colleen's abduction. She puts Amber to bed and goes to sleep with Cam. In bed, they both talk about how things can be worked out. She demands to meet her family, but Cam states that they'll think about it. Furthermore, Cam reveals that he was always into bondage and Jan couldn't bear it, but he says that Colleen can. With that, they go to sleep together. The following days, Colleen and Jan get along well, as she does Jan's hair and they go to church together. Later at noon, she plants some beans in the ground and Jan watches her. She then walks up to her to have a talk, but as soon as Colleen picks up the shovel, Jan leaves in a hurry as if she's trying to avoid the shovel and the dirt. The scene then shifts to the women sitting together while playing with Amber. In the meantime, Cam arrives and demands Colleen to go make dinner, but Jan intervenes and states that she'll be there later. The statement enrages Cam and he takes Jan to the bedroom to torture her. During this, Colleen manages to distract Amber but later goes to the bedroom to console Jan. It's been 2,310 days following the abduction. In September 1983, Cam talks to Colleen and gives her the news that the supposed company has allowed her visit to her parents. She's beaming with happiness as she prepares to visit her family. Both of them get in the car and drive along the vast roads, but Cam warns her that the company is watching her so she must not do anything silly. She agrees and they finally arrive at the house. Her family becomes filled with utmost joy as they all meet with each other. After seeing her off, Cam leaves and the happy family proceeds to have dinner. 
They all make jokes and later that night, Colleen sits with her sister Bonnie who asked her what the problem was and where she was all this time without any letter or contact. She doesn't reveal anything and goes to sleep. The next morning arrives and Bonnie inquires with her once again. She notices the tension and the worry in Colleen's face, but just as she's about to say something, the bell rings and Cam arrives to pick her up. Utterly surprised at his early arrival, she goes to get her stuff while Cam feeds her parents the story that they're planning to get married soon. During all of this, Bonnie notices the strangeness of the situation but doesn't say anything as Colleen and Cam pose awkwardly for the picture her mother is taking. After goodbyes, they leave the house. As they return to their house, they both lay in each other's arms and decide to start a family together, but Jan overhears them and decides to leave the house. The next morning, she packs up her things and when Colleen asks her what she's doing, Jan simply answers that there is one too many people in her marriage. With that, she strolls outside where her father is waiting for her in the car. Meanwhile, Cam runs outside to stop her, but Jan puts the blame on him and drives away. The departure cripples Cam and he takes out his anger on Colleen. He strips her of her clothes once again and takes her outside through the pouring rainstorm into the basement where he locks her up in the box. Afterwards, he closes the lid and drives away. Intermittently, Jan prays in the church while crying excessively. All the while, the basement fills up with water as Colleen is shivering in the freezing cold. Then, Cam's conscience dawns on him and forces him to turn back. We shift to the basement where the lid opens up and it turns to be Jan who saves Colleen and gets her out. After offering her some fresh clothes, she tells her the story of the girl before her named Quincy who was also hitchhiking. Unfortunately, Cam tortured her to such an extent that she died and they had to bury her. Afterwards, we witness Cam returning to the shed but finding it empty. Meanwhile, Jan takes Colleen to a bus stop so that she can escape and have a life of her own. As the bus arrives, Jan reveals that there was no slave company and Cam was just using her. Gradually taking in all the grief, Colleen climbs on the bus and rides away. On the other hand, we witness Cam crying horribly as he's now doomed to hell and with that, the movie comes to an end. Let me know in the comments how you guys felt about today's movie. Make sure to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. Thanks for watching, guys.